Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble, and I'm excited to be here with Jake Tooten from Songfinch. Now, I have heard about Songfinch a few times from artists that I work with, and I've been curious, and I'm so glad he reached out to me because I'm always looking for other streams of income for artists, and this is definitely one, and I know they're looking to expand the artists that they're working with. So before we get into how it all works, Jake, I'd love to find out a little bit about the background of the company, like how it got started, why it got started, and how long have you guys been around? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, thanks for the hospitality and for for having me. Um, your uh, product services, yourself, your bio caught my eye because I know we're both in the business of helping. Or um, I need to introduce myself and say hello to this woman because we're both uh, playing in, in the same sandbox. But uh, so anyway, thank you for the hospitality first and foremost. Um, but yeah, Songfinch is a, is a pretty cool company. What Songfinch does is we uh, facilitate customized personalized songs, and we have a network of independent artists, songwriters, musicians that are compensated to create and facilitate these songs. So on the one side of the marketplace, we're having people uh, purchase custom music and get very happy when they receive it. And on the side of the marketplace, I imagine you and I will chat about is really helping artists uh, figure out another tool in their tool belt to monetize their craft. And how long have you guys been around? Songfish was founded in 2016 out of oh, wow. Chicago. Um, admittedly, probably really went full foot on the gas around 2020 and so or so it, it was around and doing its thing but it's been on, a, on an aggressive oh rate. i'm sure during the pandemic it was like this is stuff we can do during the pandemic right yeah. well hey every venue shut down all the world you know all the yep. gig shut down so that was helpful and uh it's funny it's carried over we just had a uh, uh, Ponce uh, is a twin brothers whose last name is Ponce and that's their their act name as well. They're back on tour and the whole deal and they were like, we still want song finishing the tool belt even while everything's back open. So yes, I think um, the pandemic helped plant a bunch of seeds and now they're, they're blossoming for sure. Mm, that's really cool. So let us know kind of like, what are the use cases? Like what are people coming to you for to get custom songs done? Yeah, we run the gambit, right? So there's some, there's, there's what I call all the standard stuff, weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, things like that. Then there's the quirky, fun stuff. Uh, someone just put in a song, I think it was from the perspective of their dog to the mom, just like a total silly Billy kind of deal. Uh, and then we get some intense stuff. We've had some like, thank you for adopting me type things or uh, if someone is, you know, we have some where people are like terminally ill and they want to leave like a legacy song. So we run the gambit from very uh, intense, heartfelt, all the way to, hey, it's silly. And, you know, Bree's, Bree's birthday is coming up. Let's make her a goofy song about, you know, X, Y, Z. That's really cool. So I definitely want to explore like the, the customer side first, and then we'll get into the artist because I want to understand like, you know, what your company is offering to people. So are you actually fully writing songs for people or are you taking songs and like rewriting the words or how does that work? Yeah. So the customer pays $199 full transparency. So $200. And then what they do is fill out a quick questionnaire. So they'll say, I'd like a country song from a female singing voice. The occasion is wedding anniversary. And then we prompt them for some background story. What were some of your favorite memories? Where did you people meet, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then in less seven days or less on the customer side, they receive a beautifully curated custom song in seven days. 
Wow. And what is the production value that you promise them? The production value is um, radio quality on the customer side. Like I, I'll be fully transparent. We can get as grain, granular as you'd like on the artist side. They're, they're getting a product that when they play it on their Spotify next to whatever they're listening to, that it would not affect the listening experience. It is a high quality radio quality song for sure. Got it. Okay. And so pretty much any artist that is working with you needs to be able to have access to be able to record that on their side. Yeah. On the artist side, it, it, it's a change vernacular a little, a little bit. It's what I would call a high-end demo, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's definitely higher than a working tape. You need to be able to put a nice mix on the track, add some EQ, that sort of things. But you definitely don't need to send it out to get mastered and it doesn't need to be a 64 track masterpiece <laughs> you know what i mean a lot of time it's instrumentation it depends on the genre but a uh, single instrument maybe a little bit of software instrument underneath uh, a nice clean mix on it and then you're good to go so most of our artists are doing it through some kind of home what you would call bedroom setup right like i've got logic in my in my studio but the studio could be air quotes you know you know, we, all the stuff we all I do myself yeah. the bed. desk right next to your bed yes uh-huh so <laughs> for sure yeah. um well so what about um like oh, that was what I was going to ask about arrangement like so it could be just acoustic guitar and voice or piano and voice do they does the customer make any recommendations around that or is it more just about genre yeah the customer can give some recommendations around tempo Okay. And they can, um, the, the genres too are laid out pretty well. So like singer, songwriter, more than acceptable that it's just a one instrument and vocal. Uh, acoustic pop, it's laid out for the customer. Like this will probably have a, a little bit more of a rhythmic driving force. Again, on the artist side, it doesn't need to be fully, you know, just to say 64 tracks again, but you're probably maybe going to have some, some, some drums underneath it or a shaker or some kind of software instrumentation or that, that sort of thing. So the customer picks the mood as well. So they can say, Hey, I want this to be happy and uh, funny. And I want it to be up-tempo acoustic pop. So our artists, then we know on our side, Oh, these artists would be great for that. Let's offer it to, to Bree in this example. Brie receives the, the song opportunity. You can either accept it or deny it. Totally up to you. And if you accept it, then you would write and record the song to the information provided in the brief. Got it. And are they entirely like unique to each customer? I understand that, you know, you've got each customer's information of what they want, but like, if I'm writing for Songfinch, could I use kind of a melody I used before and, and put new lyrics to it? Or are we promising that this is like a never, you know, never heard before melody and lyrics? Yeah, each song on the customer side is 100% personalized and customized. On the artist side, the lyrics absolutely 100% have to be new and specific to each song. We do not, it's not like, oh, here's a stock chorus for wedding it. Like, no, it's, it's gotta be new lyrically. That being said, we don't mind if you like, maybe repurpose a little bit of melodies or repurpose some instrumentation, not in a blatant form, but if you're like, oh, I really like that melody from that one. I wanna flip it into this one and re, you know, reuse ideas. That's absolutely okay on the artist side. Lyrically, 100% new each time, no matter what. Got it. And then I have to ask, how does copyright work? Because, you know, if I write this song and it's 100% written by me and I own the master and all that. So then are we transferring the ownership rights of the master to the person that purchases it? And what's up with the copyright? Yeah, beautiful, perfect question. So the answer is it's all yours, you, you being the artist in this scenario. We, we wanna be, and we strive to be as artist friendly as humanly possible. So the artist retains full rights, the, the master, the publishing, the copyright, whatever you wanna call it. What we do then is offer the customer a personal use license. So they can post it on their Facebook and things like that, but they can't do anything to monetize it at all. And then the artist, obviously, because they own said copyright, say they write a song for song and they're like, you know what, I really like this. I want to put this on my EP or whatever. They own it. We, they, it's completely yours. That's pretty cool. Okay. So it's almost like an incentive to write new music 
giving, you know, giving you more ideas to write music. Now, of course, you know, I'm not going to put something on my EP about, you know, grandma Marge's birthday. Right. But like certain songs might actually just really spark like someone's cool, let's say it's their anniversary and their cool, like story of how they met or whatever. And if you didn't include names, or if maybe you did include names for them, but then you wanted to re-record it where you took the names out or changed them or whatever, you know, it could spark a really cool idea for a song that could then be on your EP. I love that idea. Yeah, and that's the whole deal. It's like, we want you to be active, right? We want you to be constantly writing. And if we can spark an idea in Songfish Land that will translate into your, uh, you know, personal artistry or whatever, the proper way to say that would be land, like, perfect, beautiful, do it. And it's happened a few times where artists have hit us and like, hey, I dropped my EP, check this out. This is that one Songfish or this main melody or this came from that. And it's always cool to see it in a, in a different light. But yeah, that's on the, that's on the table for sure. I love it. That's That's really cool. And how cool if like, the song that was written for my birthday then becomes like a hit or something, you know? And then I can just tell everybody, hey, this was actually about me. You exactly, know? and that's what I get excited about too. So one, like the song and then two, the artist, right? So we've got approximately 1500 artists right now as one or two or three, or hopefully dozens of them continue to grow in their career and uh, say they, you know, make it giant air quotes whatever that means you know to become an a-lister could you imagine that too of like oh i have a one of one song from you know beyonce four years before she was beyonce or whatever that always gets me excited uh, for that prospect as well that is exciting okay so i gotta ask 1500 artists how can you possibly be looking for new artists you, you don't do you really have enough work for that many people or is it just that they're you know, they're available in and out. No, it's the opposite. I'm, I'm actively recruiting artists. We're actively recruiting artists. So at this juncture, we're doing about 3,500 songs a week. through what? Songs. Yeah. So <laughs> On average, our artists um, are receiving three songs per week. Oh. Now, giant asterisks for any of the artists listening, a lot of that depends on the genre, the type, you know, the orders that are coming through. Like right now, our country orders are far surpassing, like our hip hop orders, just because of the nature of the beats, that sort of thing. So it's, uh, but yeah, we know we, we, we're getting three to 4,000 songs accomplished per week around here right now, which is so fun and exciting. We're so grateful. Okay. I've just got to say, I'm very impressed by that. And I want to know, how are you getting these kinds of sales? Where are you advertising? Because I'm any musicians here that offer custom songs on their website or whatever, they're just like, how the, how do I get in on this? Like, that's amazing. What are you guys doing to get that kind of business? Yeah. So huge kudos to our marketing team. A lot of, uh, this is the educated way to say it, internet stuff, right? Search engine optimization, mm -hmm. uh, targeted ads, things like that. And then I think one of our biggest drivers is honestly word of mouth usually mm -hmm. when someone receives a song or makes a song they end up posting about it telling all their friends about it that sort of thing so there's a lot of repeat customers and a lot of word of mouth action uh, and then we've got just an amazing growth and marketing team uh, as well and then all of our artists also have individual pages right so like in theory you could say hey i'm on song finish come book me link in bio that sort of thing we never pressure any artists to do that but some artists put that tool in their tool belt as well so sometimes it's it's direct marketing from the artists themselves as well oh that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. so i'm thinking about use cases do you know let's say for example i wanted a custom uh intro for you know a song for my podcast or something is that something you guys do yeah so that's that perfect like gray area right if we, when you think about like company expansion and what's next mm -hmm. so like well, obviously another potential lane is you know corporate offerings and maybe it's a higher price point and things like that so i think right now we're in like the case by case mode and it really kind of all depends <laughs> you know what i mean if, if this is a uh, oh it's a neighborhood podcast it's you know you and your right. buddies and it might get a couple hundred listens like yeah no problem you know if it's you know, whatever number one on the charts is like, yeah, we'll probably treat that as like a corporate offering and do like a, a, a side conversation to figure out the best price point kind of deal. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And then, so like if they were to use that song on the podcast, then is there like an ongoing license that they would pay for to do that? Or how does that work? Yeah, so like, so we, we have, uh, the company was built in the footprint of a sync licensing company, by okay. the way. 
So our founders had a sync licensing company for uh, 10, 12, maybe even up to 15 years, whatever, like a long, a long call, right? So it's built in the footprint of sync licensing. So the good news is they have a high level of IQ and acumen and lexicon in that world. So let's say it was dealing with the number one podcast in the world. Uh, they would have the acumen to figure out a new side uh, deal contract, et cetera. If it's just straight up through the Songfinch channels, uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, but like basically all you have is a personal use license, right? So you can post it and that sort of thing. But if you start getting into the monetization game, it maybe gets a little bit more unique, but I do not want to uh, mislead. That is not my strength. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't want to say the wrong thing, but the good news is there's people in the building who know uh, the right thing there. It's, I guess, Short answer, it's a little bit of a gray area on, on that sort of thing. Yeah, Just, it makes sense. I mean, those those areas have a lot of gray, in my opinion. <laughs> like, the, you know, there's it's still a little bit the Wild West with the Internet when it comes to that kind of like sound licensing and stuff. And, and there's I feel like people are still kind of hammering it out. So it makes sense. And I, it is kind of a use case thing until until things get regulated. Well, I'm sure you've experienced it and even independent of, of Songfinch, I'm hearing use cases of like, hey, I own all the rights to this music I made, but I used a sample from like Splice, say, for mm -hmm. example. But then another even major artist maybe used that same sample and now YouTube is pulling my music or whatever because of the splice, but legally I'm cleared, but now it's getting picked up in the algorithm. Like it, it's uh, there's a whole ball of wax going on right now with, even though the sample's cleared, will the algorithm find it? And, oh and yeah, I've heard of people actually getting their own live feed shut down for playing their own songs because it YouTube said that they were copyright infringing. Yeah. On I'm, themselves. I love that they're trying to protect artists, right? It's like it's like the catch 22 though, right? Like if I do, if I go live and you know dozens of people are watching and there's a Pink Floyd song in the background, I say like let the baby have his ball. But also you want to protect the artist and I am an artist protector myself. And if you're an indie artist and someone's actually using one of your songs and they're monetizing it, like I want to protect that person. So I don't know where the uh where the line is drawn and it's definitely blurry. You know what I mean? It's very blurry, very, very blurry. Um, okay, so let's talk about, about the artist. So they have seven days to produce a song, which I know it seems like a long time, but if you're like, if you're doing a lot of things as an artist, if you're touring, if you've got shows, like I know I, I do the occasional, um, you know, demo work on like air gigs and stuff. And I'm always like, oh, seven days, no problem. And then all of a sudden it's like day seven. I'm like, I need to do this. I didn't even realize it was seven days ago, you know? So it's, do you, uh, do you ever have a hard time getting people to produce them that quickly? Because if they are really good artists, they're busy. Yeah. If they are good artists, they're busy and what a good problem to have. Uh -huh. So our, our artists can come and go as they please. We just ask them to notify us on the, the once you are an artist on Songfinch, you have a dashboard and you can just hit like, take a break. So you're going on tour, you're unavailable, you're swamped, just take a break and then I'm back. And then our music supervision teams knows if you're in the mix or not. And then even if you're in the mix and we offer you an opportunity, artist has right of refusal to either say yes or no to that song. So the only thing we really ask is if you say yes, please just see it through and honor that commitment. But the ball is really in your court as far as A, are you even available? And then B, even if you are, you can say no to any opportunity at all. Got it. And obviously you have to be communicative as an artist. If, if you're offered a song, you need to, like how, how fast do they have to decide whether they can do it or not? Yeah, that's the wild part. So there, the, the offer comes via email to the artist. The artist has 24 hours to say yes or no. Let's assume the artist says yes. Their window is four days right, and record the song because the customer window is seven. So they get it to us on day four. We listen, uh, you know, go over with a fine tooth comb, et cetera, et cetera, and then get it to the customer in seven or less. So it's even a quicker turnaround, which sounds daunting. But once you get in the groove of these things and you kind of know like the, the the wave of it and your formula, it's uh, it's really not as daunting as it seems. Absolutely. Yeah. If you've got, I mean, if you've got like a production template set up for it and, you know, you're, you're doing three a week or even more, it you can just easily like crank them out. I think it's just, it's when you're doing, that's why I get all screwed up when I need to do a demo. It's like, oh, I gotta, you know, 
pull out this software or pull out the mic or, you know, just doing a different task than I usually do. Well, right? I think, you have to set aside time and like mental to like, let's switch into this mode. Exactly. And I think that's why one of the reasons artists enjoy song French outside of like there's a plethora I could list off, but one of them is we handle the organization. You don't have any customer communication, customer communication. You're not chasing down the payment. You're not doing anything like that. We handle everything you say yes or no. So I'm an, I'm an artist as well. And I'll do some song French songs. I never try to take any food off of our other artist table, but sometimes we have so many where it's like, Oh, Jake, can you, can you, you know, do a couple of these for us? Anyway, I'll say all that not to be self-serving, but to say this, I use Logic, Logic Pro. I've got my song Finch template. So I know exactly what the tracks are. They're already like mixed. Now you have to go back in and really fine tune them. But like the bass is there. The template quite literally is there. Well, I know if I'm doing a song Finch song, like, oh, pull up a song Finch session. There's my 12 tracks and here's what I'm doing today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. You can save so much time if you've got a template like that. And what about from the customer's perspective, after the seven days, if they listen and they're like, eh, that wasn't really what I was expecting. Do they have any right of refusal or can they ask for changes or anything? Yeah. Well, the good news is, and I don't want to say the wrong number, our five-star rating is like 98%, something like that. So we're, we're facilitating hundreds of thousands of songs and uh, knock on all the wood. I think we're at a 98% five-star. Now to answer your question directly without doing <laughs> stuff in fluff, if they just don't like the song, but we checked all the boxes. You asked for female acoustic up tempo and we, and we gave you female acoustic up tempo. We checked your boxes. It's, we love you. But you know, here's our, you can maybe pay a small fee to, to circle your way back around. Now, if the mistake is on our end or the, or the artist's end, we'll absolutely handle it, no problem, free of charge, consider it done. Like they said the wrong name or they said the wrong date or something, yeah. We handle that, no problem at all, 100%. Okay, that makes sense. That seems like a good policy. And then we and... also have a gray area too, sorry not to cut you off. Oh, go ahead. Too. So like, man, you guys did do it right and you did everything, but man, I would just really, really would have loved if. So we'll offer a, a small revision for a fee. So then we can go back to the artist and be like, hey, you did everything right, but they really want you to mention if you can, just this whatever, the sunset and, and, and the Grand Canyon where we met, it, can you squeeze it in? And then we'll, 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 we'll monetize that for you real quick. We'll pay you for it. Got it. That, yeah, that, that's just a great system because that gets them exactly what it is that they want. And it's not shortchanging the artist, and making them go back multiple times to fix things. So I love that system. And I think one of the reasons that you have a, like a 98% rate is because you do pretty uh, heavy interviewing before you choose an artist. So can you let them know kind of what the what the process is of how they can apply and, and what they'll you know experience before they get chosen? Because you don't just choose anyone. Yeah, absolutely. So you can apply on our website site, excuse me, songfinch.com under the, uh, I believe it's uh, the community tab uh, and scroll down to the bottom. And if, if I'm reposting this, I'll put the link and that sort of thing. But um, so yeah, so what happens there is you just give us a little bit of info, information about yourself and usually a link to whatever music you have. So Spotify, SoundCloud, that sort of thing. Our team will review that link. And if we say, oh, I think this would be a good fit, we'll invite you to take the next steps, which is... Uh, an audition song, but really just like a verse in a chorus, you know, under a minute just to get an idea of can you write well, what's your recording sound like from home, because a lot of times the Spotify link you might get from an artist is recorded in a professional studio, right. after, but what are you doing from the home studio? So anyway, audition song, and then assuming that goes well, we say, hey, welcome to Songfinch, and then we'll uh, keep really close uh, ties on you in a good way for your first opportunity or two? Do you understand it? Do you have all the information you think? We have a great artist services, artist development team that really just hats off to, to all of them. Uh, and then once you're off and running, it's kind of like training wheels off, go get them tiger, you know, have fun. So um, in my experience, it's writing for songfish. If you have the skill set, which I know is so easy to say, it's really easy. <laughs> honestly and if you don't have the skill set it can be a little bit sometimes of an uphill battle so it's like getting the artist to the place of like educating and encouraging them to get to that song pitch space we've got people that are amazing talents but sometimes writing to a brief just like isn't their thing you know i think that's true and there's also the people that they love just recording from home they never want to perform live and this could be another stream of income for them or there's the people that have developed all these songwriting skills and and production skills 
and they did it for fun. Uh, but you know, now they're retired and they're like, I may as well make some money off of all this money that I spent developing these skills. So I think it's a really great opportunity for artists. Now, the final question that I want to ask is how much does do artists make from each song brief? Uh, it's a 50, 50 split. So, uh, uh, 199 is the customer cost. The artist gets paid hundred dollars of that. And then of that, there's some added incentive too. So like right now, uh, it's a hundred dollar base. If the customer can add an additional verse, that'll bump it up by $40. Customers are given the opportunity to add gratuity, which happens on about a third of the orders. Mm -hmm. So I always tell our artists, the answer is a hundred dollars and let's consider anything else a bonus. But realistically, you might see some orders, 140, 180, 200, you know what I mean? That sort of thing. But I think the safe, honest, transparent answer is a hundred dollars per song base. So basically it's at least a hundred dollars. At least a hundred dollars. Exactly. But it could definitely be more. And I, and I, love that opportunity to tip. I think that's really great because the kind of people who are doing this appreciate artists and I think they might want to tip. I've seen some absurdly generous tips that are the <laughs> exception, not the rule, of course, but we had a $500 tip recently. We had a $300 tip uh, a week or so ago. I think the average tip is usually like 20, 30, $40 kind of deal, but we've seen some, uh, some, you know, end of the bell curve and it's like, oh, that's pretty fun. And, and you hit it on the head too. You were saying something earlier that just kind of sparked my, 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 my thought a little bit, but our artists run everything from the gambit from someone at Belmont who is literally in their dorm room and 20 years old, but just have a great sound all the way up to, we've got a couple of Grammy award winners and people who have major cuts with like Tim McGraw and that sort of thing. So we care about all of our artists, but we, we speaking of the bell curve, you can be on the forefront of your career or you could already be thriving or, you know, if, as long as the musical quality is there, you know, we're, we're not overly concerned about your resume up to this point. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So, so many opportunities, many opportunities for people at all different levels and all different career stages. Exactly. Right. And, 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 and times of life. Everything you speak about and everything you educate people on and artists on about the best ways to monetize, right? So we all know that those are tools in our tool belt, right? If I can, if I'm gigging out twice a week and I'm lucky enough to get a placement and now I've got some merch and now I'm doing song finch and, you know, I'm missing out on all the tools you team, but you know what I mean? Now you look up and you're like, oh, wow, I'm a full-time artist now. I'm a full-time musician because I pieced it together. Songfinch just wants to really feed that, I guess we could call middle class of artists that are so close, but they're still having to do their side hustles. Our, our goal is like, let's get you out of that side hustle. Let's maybe with all the respect to all the side hustles, let's stop, you know, driving and, and doing, you know, uh, dropping up food and being a bar back. And let's, let's write three songs a week and be a full-time musician instead. Right. And this could be your side hustle at first, and maybe you love it and maybe you make it a full-time thing, or maybe you still do it as a side hustle, but you're also creating like assets that you can use. Like you said, you own these songs. So now you have more things to submit to, you know, placement opportunities for licensing and things like that. You're strengthening your core craft, which is writing, recording, building a catalog, while at the same time making money up front and building genuine, authentic fan connections. Because when these people receive the songs, they're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to go follow this person, slide in their DM, sing their praises, that sort of deal. And we all know the adage right now, which I won't say poetically, but like it's better to have 100 rabid fans than, you know, uh, 10,000 passive fans, you know? So if you're doing three songs a week and then a year goes by and you look up and you're like, oh, these are all people that know my name now or at least heard my name, which is like a really cool way to grow a fan base as well. Yeah, absolutely. And if you or even like released this as a, like, so is there any rules of like how long you have to wait to release it? Or once you send it off to the customer, could you then release it as a single if you wanted and then like build some momentum around that? Artist owns the rights. So we, we, we've got artists that use us in their marketing tool belt and we've got artists that, um, uh, don't use this as much in the marketing tool belt. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's it's totally up to them. But yeah, if they want to build it into, hey, I just did the song for the song and I'm going to live stream how I created it and I'm going to release the same instrumental with my own different lyrics. Like, please put it in as much spotlight as you want to put on it. Feel free. Totally up to the artist. Right. And how amazing that, you know, the person that got the song could be like, now my song is on Spotify and they might tell people about it and then you could get some plays and, you know, 
it just and them. it all feeds into like more people hearing your catalog and all of that stuff right it's, it's stealing a, a phrase from one of our founders but it's a it's a karma flywheel of just like happiness and that sort of thing so like the customer's happy the artist's happy there's not really a downside genuinely because it is artist friendly rights and there's not like that other everyone's always waiting for that other shoe to drop we just are kind of knock on wood facilitating a lot of happiness from every uh every angle of the process i like that i like karma flywheel is much better than a win-win i'm so sick of hearing people say it's a win-win i have a bad habit of speaking in like metaphors and like oh, i love it things of like karma flywheel win-win a rising tide lifts all ships you know I've oh, got i do that too recently. so uh but it all it's it uh it, outside of teasing about how you say it is exactly all those things ring true and it's pretty cool to be a part of i think so too well, is there anything else you want to tell us? I think we've covered mostly everything. Is there anything that we've missed? No, I think we I think we hit everything on the head for Songfinch. Uh, I would just like to reiterate my appreciation to to you for both the the platform and the voice you're providing Songfinch and myself. But also, like I said, we're playing in the same sandbox anyway. We're both trying to help artists monetize their craft and put another tool in their tool belt. So, independent of this conversation we had, thank you because I think we're we're all trying to just strengthen artists and and the community of artists that that exist in the world so uh all of the good energy and vibes to you and i very much you know appreciate the platform thank you yeah i i have been known to say many times the you know a rising tide lifts all ships and all of that so i mean i'm a metaphor or two and i think that's absolutely true that's something i've said from the beginning of what i've been doing online so you guys are are definitely part of that rising tide so thank you so much and i appreciate sharing everything that you've done how can people find you again your website and any social media handles yeah songfinch.com and we're lucky enough that all the, the social media media handles are just at songfinch so song uh, and then finch like the bird f-i-n-c-h uh instagram uh twitter you know you know all the standard ones TikTok, but songfinch.com is the place to be and uh you know i again can't thank you enough. If anyone has any follow-up questions or whatever, just shoot us a note and, and we'll gladly uh, respond to you directly. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Have a great night, Greg. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.